when I first realized that I had to cancel um, my Illustrator, my Photoshop, Premiere Pro, I kind of thought my career as a graphic designer was over. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. Uh, yes, it has been a very long time since I last posted something and I do apologize for that. I have been keeping myself busy with a lot of projects and had a few things that got in the way, but I don't want to waste this video talking about all of those things. Um, but if you are curious to know what's been going on, I will kind of list it in point form in the description below. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from ones that I've done in the past um, because I'm not going to be doing any design work on my computer. Uh, instead, I wanted to kind of talk about something um, that has been a roadblock for me over the past few months and maybe even a reason why I haven't been posting any design videos. So I'm not too sure if I mentioned it at all in the past, but at the end of March or so, I think it was, um, I ended up having to cancel my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. And when I first realized that I had to cancel um, my Illustrator, my Photoshop, Premiere Pro, I kind of thought my career as a graphic designer was over, you know? Uh, everybody that I look up to as a graphic designer, um, I would say most, if not all of them, use Illustrator to design a lot of the logos, a lot of their illustrations and stuff like that. And so when I kind of first realized that I had to do that, I didn't really know what to do. So in today's video, I just kind of wanted to uh, talk about the programs that I have been using in place of the Adobe programs that I used to use uh, before I had to cancel that subscription. So the first and probably most important program that I needed a replacement for was Adobe Illustrator. Now, uh, when it comes to logo design, branding, uh, any kind of custom illustration and lettering and stuff like that, um, Illustrator has always been like a go-to for me to do a lot of my designs. And so it was the first program that I started, had to start looking for um, alternatives to. And the, I ended up kind of downloading two. The first one was Inkscape, and that's actually what I used in my last set of brand identity for, uh, videos. And it was okay, it's a free program, um, but I kind of got really frustrated with the fact that it was really slow and clunky to use. Um, so I kept looking for other alternatives, even if they weren't free, and came across Affinity Designer. And at the time, um, they were offering a, a free three month trial. And so I took advantage of that. Uh, just to kind of try it out and see how it worked, see how much I liked it, see if there were enough of the tools that I needed and and like that I normally used to use in Illustrator, see if those tools were also in Affinity Designer. So when it came close to the end of that three month trial, which was back in June, I believe, um, they were about to end their discount that they were previously offering on those programs just because um, I think they were doing it because of the pandemic and then with things getting better then they were kind of getting rid of that discount so I took advantage of it and ended up paying I think it was a 30% off thing on their program and I think their program is normally about I want to say $70 but check the website just in case so those are the two programs that I have right now and most of the time I'm using Affinity Designer to do a lot of the work that I used to do in Illustrator but lately there have been a couple of functions that um, I really miss about Illustrator and that 
uh, affinity designer doesn't have and so I've kind of had to go back to doing that function in Inkscape um, what I'm talking about is the uh, image trace function right now as far as I know affinity designer doesn't have that function and I had to go back to Inkscape because they do have something that's kind of similar in that program um, it's not something that I do a lot normally. I will import one of my sketches and then just use the pen tool to recreate it. But in this case, I kind of wanted that kind of sketch style to show up. And so I had to figure out how to um, do that in Inkscape. So another program that I use fairly regularly for graphic design projects and brand identity projects is Photoshop. Now, I don't really use Photoshop to do a lot of photo editing or photo manipulation, but what I do use it for is mock-ups. And so when I was looking for an alternative, what I was mainly searching for was something that would work with smart objects. And in the past, um, I have used a program called Pixel R online to do some things that Photoshop was able to do which I think for me was getting rid of a white background and stuff like that. But it doesn't have the ability to work with smart objects. So the program that I did find, which is also an online only kind of thing, is called Photopea. So it allows me to open up my Photoshop files in that little window area. I can double click on the smart object and then change that um, that new little file to whatever it is that design that I want to add to it just like I would if I was in Photoshop so the other thing that I like about photo P is that you can also do animations in there so I know that there's a lot of tutorials and stuff about how to create animated gifs in Photoshop using that timeline feature now photo photo P doesn't have the timeline but you can rename your layers and then add something to adjust the timing and create something that's pretty similar to what you used to do in Photoshop. So that has been my go-to program for that lately. The next program that I use a lot and mostly because I'm starting to do more videos again is Premiere Pro. And so that was one of the, the first things that I started to look for because you know, as much as I realize that I do have a MacBook and it has iMovie and it works great for a lot of simpler projects, uh, I've kind of gotten used to uh, the abilities within Premiere Pro in terms of adding multiple video tracks and audio tracks and the keyframing ability in case I wanted to do um, any kind of animations with text and stuff within the program. So I was kind of looking for an alternative that would do um, something similar, either at a free or low cost um, fee. So I ended up finding DaVinci Resolve and it is a free program and I do believe you can also use it on a Windows computer, not just Mac. Um, um, and it has worked out great for me. And one of the features that I really love about that program is the tracking ability. And so it would basically allow me to put something like a title on the screen, um, almost like connect it to a point in the video. And then as the video moves, the text would also move. And I just thought that was, I mean, I don't know everything about DaVinci Resolve, but just knowing that alone, was like amazing for me because I was like, oh, the things that I can do with graphics and text and stuff like that. And that's normally something that I used to have to do in After Effects. So um, that is a program that I've mostly been using. Uh, yes, I do use iMovie every once in a while if I'm doing something simple, like, um, you know, sometimes when I do the video demos for my Etsy shops, I'll just use iMovie because it's just a really simple, um, you know, fade in, fade out, and then export it. So, um, but for more complicated projects, I have been in DaVinci Resolve doing my video editing. And now that I've mentioned After Effects, um, even though it's been a program that I haven't really used a whole lot in recent years, 
um, mainly because um, I have an old computer with not very much space on it and I just find that um, it's not able to run After Effects very well. So I had to start looking for alternatives to that a long time ago. And one of the things that I have been using a lot is Keynote. And um, I, I think, you know, people don't really think about just how much you can do in Keynote when it comes to animations for video. Um, most people just think of it as the uh, max version of PowerPoint and stuff like that as a slideshow presentation. But I have been using it to do a lot of my like lower third titles, any kind of pop-up animations that come up. Um, I've had videos where I've done intros, uh, the end screen. Those are kind of things that I have created in Keynote. Uh, I've also created animated social media templates in it and in fact, it actually prompted me to create, uh, start creating courses on how to use Keynote for video. And so I will put the link to my Skillshare class that I have. Right now I only have one up, but I will be adding a few more. So if you want to sign up, you can start watching it using the free trial that they have going on. So uh, that's what I've been using as a replacement for After Effects. Uh, another program that's um, kind of similar is Canva. It's not really exactly the same, but Canva already has some pre-made animations to it. So if I wanted to add a, an animated sticker to the video, um, I can actually kind of take one of the designs that are already in Canva, export it, and then uh, add it as an overlay to my video. So Canva is another option. So another program that I used to use a lot for creating things like PDF resources um, and templated almost like, um, used it a little bit for my party decor designs that are on my other Etsy shop, um, is InDesign. And um, there's not a whole lot of exact replacements for it. I guess Affinity uh, does have the Affinity Publisher that you can purchase, but I didn't really want to spend the money on it. So for me, uh, my replacement for InDesign has been either Keynote or Canva. Um, in Keynote, um, you can actually create, um, I guess, PDF templates if you want to, or templates that you can be used as PDFs. You can just change the size of your slide to something that's more similar to either a like a letter size piece of paper or something like that. And what I love about Keynote is that just like in InDesign, you can save different textiles and then just apply them. And then if you have multiple areas where it's using the same style, it will update all those areas that it was using that particular style, which is a feature that I really loved about uh, InDesign was setting up those textiles and stuff like that. So Keynote is a huge tool for me if you haven't realized, but unfortunately it is only available to Mac users. Um, although there is an app if you do have any kind of Apple device, iPad, uh, iPhone and stuff like that. So. Um, that is one of the replacements. And then Canva is another one where I'll go into and just create like, um, I use it a lot for any kind of PDF resource that I include with my products on Etsy. And it seems to work well. Usually I just have to go in and then make the few little changes and then re-export it again every time that uh, I need it for a new product. So that is my replacement for InDesign. Now, one other program that I do have included on my list of programs to kind of go over, um, but that I don't really use that often, is uh, the replacement for Adobe Audition. And Audition is the program for any kind of audio editing. And I did use it a little bit before, um, mostly when I was doing some instructional videos in the past or um, promo videos, um, then I would go into uh, audition to kind of splice out the song or anything like, or something like that. 
Uh, but lately I've kind of found that the audio editing feature in DaVinci Resolve is enough to do what it is that I need to edit audio for. Um, but a program that I did use before discovering Audition was Audacity. So, and it's a free program and I believe it's also a program that you can use on both Windows and a Mac. Anyways, that is it for today's video. Um, I hope it was helpful for you if you are looking for um, alternative ways to do graphic design uh, if you don't have access to any of the Adobe programs or are just wanting to kind of experiment and try something new. Thank you so much for watching this video and again I apologize for my long absence from YouTube but I am ready to get back into it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.